about a heaven in Alberta Where they've got all hell for basements Hi, hi, everyone. Frankie here, New West Reset. Hello, hello. How's it going, eh? Welcome back. Thank you very much for sh shooting in, joining a fellow here for another one, another live stream here, New West Reset Live, episode number 61 here today on this beautiful and fantastical Friday, April the 12th. Just a, a, a hair past 4 p.m. Mountain time, local time here. As always, we're coming at you from Purdy, Alberti. That's right, Calgary, Alberta, up in Canada land, eh? So welcome, 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 welcome. Thanks for kicking off your weekend with me here on this Friday. Appreciate it, as always. Beautiful day today. 15 degrees Celsius, that's uh, that's about 60 on the Fahrenheit scale there, so she's not too bad, not not looking too bad out there, there eh, bot? She's looking pretty good, eh? Actually had a, a little sprinkling of spring showers earlier this morning, just for a few minutes, just enough to, you know, make everything nice and fresh this morning. So that was welcome, as opposed to, you know, a couple inches of snow. <laughs> so I don't think I got guys out of the woods yet, but uh, lovely day, lovely day. So thank you for joining me on this lovely day. Appreciate it, as always. So episode 61 here today, we're going to be talking about uh, what we're going to look at, train, trestle, and tunnel photos. This comes courtesy of... Friend of the channel here, George, George Prokopenko. I probably butchered that last name. Sorry, George. But anyway, I've mentioned on the channel a few times that uh, George is great. Sends me uh, about one, one to two emails a week with some great photographs from all over the realm. But he's always keen to include a couple of things that old Frankie likes and train stuff. And it's just stuff related to Canada in general. But not always, right? He sends me photos from everywhere. Budapest, or Asia, or uh, uh, I don't know, Europe, like you name it. But today we're going to be looking at train-related stuff, just because it's been a while since I kind of focused on trains here on the channel. I'm talking old trains, the steam locomotives and whatnot, for the most part here. And it's kind of one of my favorite things, are those old steam trains. I love the old electric streetcar trams or trolleys as well. Love those. I don't know, just all those old world modes of transportation. I think it's pretty safe to say I could speak for the rest of us when I say that it's very interesting, very fascinating. But before I get ahead of myself here, once again, thank you for joining me. Say hello in the chat, in the box. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know where you're shooting in from. Speaking of in the box, uh, Tidal. Tidal's here. Terry Light is here as well. Good to see you. Hippie Shake. Hi, howdy, and hello, Hippie. Hidden at Plain Sight. Marit is here. Hello, howdy. Thanks for shooting in. 
think I saw Cousin Vinny. There he is. That's right. Ooh, a train episode. Train and train related stuff. Trestle bridges, some tunnels, some train stations, more modest old world, little local train stations, not the big main terminals. I mean, those are beautiful enough in themselves, but I'm sure down the road here on the channel, a guy will dive into some of the big uh, old world, uh, you know, the massive old train stations, right? Penn Station or or the big uh, CP uh, main station up in Montreal and uh, tons of others, right? Some that are still around and some that are unfortunately long, long gone. If he says, my grandfather loved steam trains. Yeah, it's kind of in my blood. It's in my blood. Bernie's here. Howdy, Bernie. Welcome, welcome, my fellow... Calgarian, Tartarian, Targaryen, you see. And yes, please, please, indeed, hit that uh, like button. Give a fella a thumbs up. Just kind of pushes me, helps to push me out into the algorithm a little bit there, you know, as we make our way towards 1,500 subscribers. Almost there. Almost there. So thank you for all of your help already with sharing and liking and making sure you're subscribed. If you're new, perhaps consider subscribing to a guy, you know. I like to do some fun stuff up here on the show, you know, especially on a Friday, and it is indeed a Friday. Yeah, come on, come on. Thanks once again, as mentioned, for kicking off your weekend with yours truly. Hey, we just like to have some fun over here up in Canada and Adia land, eh? Us crazy uh, Canucks. We, we just like to have a little bit of fun once in a while. All right, we're having a good time. And uh... Old World Migma in the box as well. Hello, hello, good to see you. Quenida. Jabaru Joe. Howdy, howdy. That's <laughs> Francisco Fabiano de Fingerici. You can just call me Frankie Fingers over here, eh? Huh? Don't need to get uh, messing around with all kinds of fancy who's it's and whatnots. <laughs> So, Tommy, where have you been, huh? Oh, I've been watching the uh, newest reset, huh? Well, you know, uh, it's the newest reset. It's this thing on YouTube. He goes around, he does his boots on the ground thing. I'll tell you. Say you can. All right, enough screwing around. Welcome. Good to see all of you. So as mentioned, we're going to look at uh, some photomographs that were sent via our friend George, George Prokopenko. I believe he is Roske, so it's George Prokopienko. That was terrible. And I will pay dearly for that later from a strongly worded email from George. No, he's cool. He's fine. He's got a good sense of humor. And indeed, well, you know, slouch your own self there, Terry, I may say. So George sent some photos, and then always, as per usual, and as always, and all that, in the box below, links to uh, a feller's bit shoot, and MeWe, my email, and of course, Rumbles, simulcasting or broadcasting uh, live simultaneously, simulcast simultaneously on the Hootubes and over on the Rumble. So welcome, everybody. <laughs> there, yes, take a bow. Curtsy. <laughs> uh, bunch of kooks. Bunch of crazies. 
So yeah, we're going to look at some photos. I've also got some old uh, video footage that I found that kind of ties in the trains with the bridges and the trestle bridges and stuff. I found some really old footage of the train going over the Brooklyn Bridge. Yes, Brooklyn Bridge, 1899. That's right, 1899. And it's taken from the perspective of a passenger on that train. So you get to see all the trestle work and all the, you know, sort of the guts of the thing and what's holding it up as the uh, train is crossing the river. And I've also found some footage of fast forward four decades. Train crossing the uh, San Francisco Bay Bridge. In eight. In uh, 1939, 1939, and again, from that same sort of perspective, from inside the passenger cars, the train is, uh, you know, shooting across the bridge there. So you get to see all the underpinnings and whatnot. So I thought that was really interesting. And of course, midway through the show here, you'll get a sneak peek at your midweek coming up vintage footage. Got some old-timey Vancouver, Canada land over in the British uh, Columbia's there. Just west of a fellow, just over the Rockies. On the other side, Vancouver. Canada's, what, third largest city, I think? I think it's Toronto, then Montreal, then Vancouver. Anyway, so yeah, that's what we've got in store. So uh, thanks again for joining. Appreciate it. Good to see all of you. I hope you had a great weekend and a good Easter and all that good stuff. Thank you for the well wishes. Feeling much better. Feeling much, much better. Guys firing on almost all cylinders. You know, uh, about 90, 94% ish voices back to normal and whatnot. It's, it's, a little bit, it's still a bit of a cough. You know, but again, you know, it's that's self-induced. I'm a dirty smoker, filthy, dirty smoker. So uh, it's my own, it's my own fault. All right. So what do you think? What do you think here? What do you say? What do you say? Let's look at some photos. We'll look at a few photos. Then we'll take a mid show break. Look at a few more and then we'll end it off with some video footage. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That my feet still smell of onions, but hey, you know, it's fine. <laughs> There's worse things your feet can smell like, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, at least the cigarettes I get are uh, 100% natural because I get them from the get them from the natives, eh? Get them from the they're in engine smokes. Yeah, I got a hookup for over on one of the reserves, and I get the. The ones that are uh, made and sold there, eh? It's, I'm not supposed to have them, though, eh? I'm not supposed to, uh, you know, because I'm a pale face. But, uh, yeah, 100% natural, at least, for whatever that's worth. Not that I'm encouraging you to smoke and telling you uh, <laughs> ways around the, the, the hefty price. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's... Uh, Exactly. That's one way to do it. <laughs> you know. You got to be friends with everybody. You know what I'm saying? You can't walk around in this realm being a douche. Be a dude. Be friends with everybody. People helping people. You help people out with some stuff. They help you out with some stuff. It's a beautiful thing. All right, let's look at some uh, photomographs here. I'm just going to open up the folder. Now, these are going to be in no particular order. Uh, I just kind of wanted to keep it random just because, uh, well, you know, it's more fun that way, I think. But there's trestle bridges, there's stone bridges, there's pictures of trains, uh, tunnels, of, like I said, a few train stations. Some are local here in Canada and land, Alberta, BC, uh, Ontario, um, and then from a lot from the US. 
and some from other parts of the world as well. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Everybody ready for the weekend? I'm willing to bet dollars to good Canadian donuts that, that you're ready. You're ready for the weekend. This one here is from uh, actually from Ontario, I believe. Uh, but look at these show offs up here. Let's get two trains on this bridge to show you how sturdy and whatnot. This massive stonework here. And then they just, you know, drop this steel trestle bridge on top. I'm assuming steel or iron. These clowns over here. Impressive enough, not a massive bridge, but impressive enough, but taking into account the landscape on which this had to be built, right? You got to fell all these trees and you got to, you know, first you got to make your way in there and then, you know, you got to work around this river, these hills, these trees. Some, uh, I should mention, of course, some will be uh, older photos and some will be more current there's no grain elevator. Not too many of these left. But I thought this was cool because you get your grain elevator here. But then you get some of the train tech here. It's one of those steam locomotives that's got a plow on the front. It's kind of cool. Obviously parked here because, well, it's not winter. Speaking of trains, there's one in the background. No sirens yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> but we're yeah we're ready we're ready for the sirens but you get a train i don't know if you can hear that going by but yeah speaking of train speaking of local train this is the very track that, that train we're hearing is is on this is the connet tunnel which is no longer there This is the uh, Canadian Pacific Rail Line, the Connaught Tunnel. Now, can you imagine building all of this? You know, you're going through rock or mountains or whatever and going around rivers. And, but just look at the, I mean, this, you're not, you know, it's obviously not level, easily accessible. But just dry, arid, cooked out wasteland. But I guess following the the river is probably the path of least resistance. But not even enough room to put both directions or both tracks, you know, on the same side of the river. It's like you even got an old abandoned track here going into the side of this thing by the looks of it. But this is very obvious. I don't know where this is, but somewhere in the southwest of the U.S., I'm guessing. But it's in the middle of nowhere, man. Wyoming or Utah or something. This is in uh, Scotland, Lockerbie. It says it right there. So there you go. Beautiful train stations in the U.K., you know, in uh, England and Scotland. Over in Wales, you know, these stone structures, arch window here, just how they've incorporated this. I'm assuming, yeah, this looks like wood. So they've got wood and different colored stone here. And looks like shale, shingle roof or something. Still operational. Filled in this Dora. It's kind of weird. But, yeah, it is what it is. We see that more often than not. This, I think, is London. But, you know, series of different tracks and switches. It's pretty early on. This is, you know, 1890s. 
but already we're seeing you know the remnants of the old world in some of these overhangs i guess you call them at the, at the train stations this to me is that's lumber that's not iron or steel or anything This is a great shot. Like, look at that thing. That is impressive as hell. Like, that is incredible. Like, never mind all this. Which, even if it's brick, uh, I don't know why I stuttered, <laughs> even if it's brick, sodded in stone, that's impressive enough. Because, I mean, here's a two-story house here. So, gives you an idea of just how huge this is. That wasn't impressive enough. You've got all this, but then, you know, this. Like, wow. Absolutely outstanding. Love the train, too. One of those uh, 1930s uh, electric turbo diesel. Passenger train. This thing's probably whipping along at about 80. 100 miles an hour right now. But this thing is just mind bending. But this to me is just as impressive because of the lack of accessibility. I mean, whether this is more modern additions to pre existing track that was dug up after the mud flood or the catastrophe. or whether it's some original track. Either way, somebody had to build this. So at some point you had to, you know, house and feed all your workers that are putting down this track, you know, like, uh, sure, maybe you have a water source here that you can boil or purify or filter or whatever. But I mean, if this was, I don't know, Montana or Colorado or something, hell, this could be Alberta. Union Pacific. So it's, it's in the States. But I mean, even though this is fairly flat again here and looks pretty easy because they're again following this river, but they've had to build up this mound here with the aggregate in order to sort of follow this line a little bit, because you've got marshy, swampy, probably floodplain here. So even though this is fairly level and fairly straight, I mean, just the inaccessibility of it is uh, just be such a huge undertaking, you know? Then you get stuff like this, too. Again, just in the middle of nowhere. There's a wooden trestle bridge, not an iron or steel trestle. Single track going right into the side of a freaking mountain, man. Now, whether this is a mining train track or whether it's a cargo and passenger train, doesn't matter. They've got to build this trestle bridge, but it's, it's built out of wood. Built out of timber. And it's got to be over this super steep gorge. You could tell all loose rock, freaking cactus and stuff here. This is the Badlands somewhere. But then, oh, let's make it curved too. Like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, on a curve. But could you, could you make anything more difficult for yourself? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for me, trains, that's in my blood. Great granddaddy and a couple of great uncles. And my granddaddy worked for CP Rail. A couple of uncles. Got a cousin that still works for them. Operates one of those big cranes that unloads the cargo containers from ships onto trains or from trains onto ships. 
right there in Montreal on, the, on one of the, I don't know what they call that, the docks or whatever down there in the main port, the CP Rail port, shipping yards. That's why I like trains. That's why I always live close to trains. You hear them in the background. doesn't bother me. doesn't wake me up in the middle of the night. Hell, I'm, I don't know, 150 yards in the trains. Love them. Now, this you would think, okay, it's, I mean, this, sure, a little bit more modern than this one. So, I mean, a little easier because these are like giant, I don't know, Meccano or Lego or Lincoln Logs, for lack of a better comparison, right? I mean, it still has to be riveted and welded and all put together. So, I mean, it's still really impressive. But, I mean, all of this lumber would have had to have been custom cut, like measured and cut on site, you know, to fit the all these angles. Because not only does this curve around here, but... It tapers to the top from the bottom, and uh, on the other side it does too. So you have multiple angles that you're working with here. So this length of lumber cannot be the same as this, this, and so on. Whereas this being, you know, straight as an arrow, bada boom, bada bing, you know, you could have regular intervals and therefore perhaps make it a little easier. But it's still death-defying and still awe-inspiring. Because, again, you're in the Badlands, man. Like, you're in the middle of nowhere. It's not like these guys are, you know, punching their card from 8 to 4 or 9 to 5. They probably have to live close by. So, I don't know, uh, some kind of labor camp. Just outstanding. My pal Bill is here. William Powell's in the box. Howdy, Bill. Good to see you. Thanks for shooting in. Modoc. Howdy, howdy. Welcome. A rail scooter. Those things are great. Are you making one out of a bicycle? Or are you making one out of a wooden pallet? Or are you going to weld your own metal frame? I watch a lot of the videos on the who tubes and whatnot about those i've been thinking about building one my own self actually just out of wooden pallets and lawnmower engine and uh, whatnot i think this is the one out by uh lethbridge in southwestern Alberta. Berta here, if I'm not mistaken. It's obviously in Canada and Adia, well, I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's Union Pacific here, sure, but Canadian Pacific. Oh, here's some, uh, again, these are in no particular order, just random. Is King's Cross in the UK? The old streetcar. At least there ain't horses pulling this one for Pete's sake. But love these just as much as the steam locomotives. They're just, again, the old world modes of transportation. You know, dirigibles and airships, luxury ocean liners, uh, streetcars or trams or trolleys, whatever you want to call them. Like these things here. The steam locomotives, the steam paddle ships and paddle boats. Just smooth, reliable transportation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know I should. You know it's crazy. You're gonna you're gonna think I'm lying through through my teeth at you. But I never really had a toy train set as a kid. I mean, I did. I had a basic oval loop electric train set, but it was nothing extravagant. I didn't have you know the whole diorama miniature landscape with the little houses and the little train stations and all the switches and tunnels and bridges and my dad's brother my uncle though he had one in the basement of uh their house up in edmonton and it was pretty big 
And I remember as a kid, you know, when we go up to visit for Easter's or what have you, just being fascinated. You know, he'd let me mess around with it, me and my cousin. And it was a lot of fun. You know, get to work the throttles and the switches to switch the tracks and stuff. And that yeah, was cool. But yeah, just the old world way of getting around, you know. Because if it broke down, you know, you just swap out a big metal part, swap in another big metal part, and Bob's your uncle. It's not hooked up to any beep boop pop beep beep boop beep 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 computers that, uh, oh, you know, once it's fried, the whole thing shuts down and you're stuck. Got to hook it up to a diagnostic machine. And like, yeah, what the hell with that BS, right? Even stuff like this is impressive, you know, these big stone arches. Is that stone or is that brick? I don't know. I mean, this is obviously stone. These could be bricks and stones. I don't know. Either way, you could see it's hooked up for the electric streetcar trolleys, but also the, uh, you know, the diesel trains, freight trains would use it as well. Again, these are from all over the realm, right? So. Now this to me, I think I've shown this photo before on the channel because it's mind blowing to me. Again, this is one of those big electric turbo diesel trains that were really common in the thirties. Beautiful, sleek, almost looks steampunkish. Definitely old world tech. I think that was uh, refurbished, brought back to life. But, I mean, these things are huge. I mean, this is like the same size as your modern diesel train, locomotive, right? And look at the size of these freaking pipes or whatever you want to call them that are supporting this. I mean, you know, all of this iron or steel work is huge enough as it is. But look at the size of these things. It's the, almost the same size as this train. Like, how did they... Get that all the way up here. I mean, it's not the best photo for perspective, but here's the roof of a building. I don't know if it's three stories or 13 stories. I don't know, but but you can get an idea from the size of this train, just how huge these things are. That's just super impressive to a guy, you know? I mean, it's tube, obviously, it's not solid, and it's in sections and whatnot, and they would lift lift them in place with cranes. You know, they have cranes. The, the trains would have a, a, a crane on them. It's basically a crane, but instead of tracks like a tank or wheels on it like a dump truck or whatever, it was on train tracks or train wheels. And they would, you know, roll it out to the job site, and I think could unload these things from a flatbed rail car. Boink, boink, boink. You know, and they, they crane it into place, and they rivet and weld and whatever and have you. But still, all of that, sure, sure, no problem. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, they use the Ark of the Covenant and some magical frequency to float these things into place or any kind of asinine cock and mimi BS like that, even with modern tech, this is impressive. But again, to me, this is just as impressive, even though it's on a way smaller scale. But just look at all the pain in the ass that they had to do down here in order to even start framing this thing up. And again, you know, rock and cactus. I mean, they're out in the middle of the desert, in the Badlands, in the middle of nowhere. You know? Let's see what Modoc's saying about his uh, rail cart. Two-part tube frame that connects by locking against weight in the middle. Oh, okay. Perhaps folding for mini... 
Minimal storage is possible. Yeah, only luggage area supported. Then a single axle tow trailer. Oh! Oh, you're going to make a little trailer to pull up. Oh, man, now, see, now you're thinking. That's smart. Built in two years. Like, yeah, like, just like most of the buildings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's good. Who knows, right? If you're traveling along some abandoned rail lines, you might come across stuff like this. Although I doubt it wouldn't trestle still be around but oh uh, there's your here's a ladder there just made out of you know wooden i mean it's just it's made, is it what yeah to me that looks like lumber yeah see this is lumber right it's not rusted uh iron is it i suppose it could be but i think this is lumber i'm seeing like knots in it and stuff even if it was iron beams or a combination of the two, still impressive because of the just the terrain. And again, you know, got to put a curve in it just to make it more of a head scratcher for you. And just to prove you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there you go. Jeez. Expecting that. Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner to go running by here. Beep, beep. Old World Michigan in the box. Howdy, howdy. Good to see you, old friend. Welcome. Here's a steel one with a curve built into it. And then they had to navigate around the existing freeway or roadway. Or maybe that might even be another train track. This might even be a huge uh, loop. But again, either way, you know, just the, you're out in the boondie, out in the boondocks. You got to build this thing, even if a lot of this is prefab at this point, even still. Very impressive. And I guess they're building it across like this rather than a slow downward descent. Because you got to go up the other side of this huge valley, I, I'm guessing. And the train wouldn't be able to make it up without doing a, you know, a massive switchback. But I mean, come on, man. And again, this one, not only is it shooting across this giant valley and riverbed, but it looks like it's... Oh, I was going to say it's coming out of the side of this mountain, but it's not. It's coming out of a curve. And it's crossing all of this shenanigans. And then it's either curving here or it's going into this mountain. But again, look how high up there. There's, you know, there's somebody's house. So look at, that's impressive, man. I think this is that's the one in by Lethbridge here in Alberta. Now this one's got everything we like about old world train bridges and trestle bridges and so on. It's got stone, it's got iron, and it's got timber. Even the, like everything is just old school, man. Couldn't even tell you what bridge this is or how old this is. But does it even matter? I mean, you could tell it's old. Obviously, going back to the old steam locomotive, you know, toot toot style train. But wow, man, impressive as hell. And just beautiful to look at, too, you know, with all of these crisscross designs that help to distribute the weight and give the structure balance and support. But it's beautiful, especially when you see it working in tandem with these stones or bricks or whatever. This one, again, is uh, rigged for cargo and passenger train, but also electric tram or streetcar as well. Here you got some impressive stonework. I mean, why do you need a coat of arms on the outside of your train? No one's going to see that. 
But no, why not? You know, just to make it fancy. Kind of a tight squeeze, but, you know, waste not, want not, I guess. Yes, it would, wouldn't it? Idaho would have... Uh, Idaho would have some impressive bridges. Yeah, you got the Rocky Mountains down there and uh, very similar to British Columbia and, and Alberta up here, right? Lots of valleys and river valleys and what, also what we call coolies up here. At least here in Alberta, we call them coolies. So like deep dips that are sort of natural trenches in the ground that look like dry riverbeds or creek beds, but not necessarily. Oh, yeah, could be. Yeah, could be whoever owns or whoever built the bridge, whoever owns the railway. Yeah, good point. Could be, could be. Whoop, there we go. The only thing I don't like about this photo is it's been colorized by AI, so it makes the people look weird. But there's a really, really early example. A trolley or a streetcar, tram, whatever you want to call it. This is from the UK, so this is tram, I believe. That's what they would call it. I think this is from the UK. But this is really early stages. Sometimes you'd see these hooked up to a horse. Look at this. Look at this nonsense. Now, this is iron or steel. So, okay, again, fine. Perhaps a little less labor-intensive or time-consuming and dangerous than lumber, you know, timber. But either way, I mean, this bridge is old because look what's, look what's on it. You know, in 1890s. Three on two steam locomotive. And I mean, look at, I mean, come on. Very, very impressive. That's quite the span with that arch. Rothrods in the box. Howdy, howdy. Good to see you. How's it going there, eh, bud? Back to the UK, again, random, all over the place. Look at this. Where are we here? Where are we? Where, what's the name of this place? Hmm. It might even just be Lockerbie again from another angle. I don't know. You get this big, huge stone down here and then all this beautiful stonework. Sure, you want to have a portal with a some kind of symbol or whatever on it. A bunch of nodes on this thing. It's just beautiful. And again, the practicality of, you know, just, yeah, we'll just build this, this little arched pedway or a little pedestrian bridge. You know, easy peasy. Beautiful light there, and, uh, you know, it's very pleasing. Awakening soldier. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. How's it going? Yeah, I got the, uh, I got the notification. Just haven't had a chance to watch. But yeah, definitely shoot on over to Awakening Soldier. Got a lot of uh, video that he shoots out there at the cabin. It's kind of the way to go if you can, eh? Is to kind of be out there disconnected uh, from, the, from the grid and whatnot. This is in London, I think. 
but just exquisite. I mean, this is, you know, all this is beautiful. And, uh, you know, these capitals and all that is just gorgeous. But even just way up in the in the rafters here, I mean, just the level of detail and pride in, in craftsmanship and workmanship. I mean, you just have trains whipping out of here. At one time, steam locomotives chugging up steam and coal soot were whipping through here. So you didn't have to make it like this, but they did. Just beautiful. Was it always a train station? Uh, probably. Old world, you know, the old world train system. Or maybe it was a dirigible hangar, like an airship hangar, maybe. But either way, whatever purpose it served. I mean, just all of this extra work. Just this layer of, this isn't brick, it's like curved stone here. And then you have brick, and, and like just, you know, for a train station. Unbelievable. really impressive you know again even if this is brick and or even concrete and just facaded in in a stone i mean that's a big ass bridge son With these fools posing i'm assuming this train has stopped and they've gotten off and they're posing Either that or it's you're cutting her close if that train is going to go whipping by there, fellers. But again, you know, you got to build all of this over water, you know, in the 18, I don't know, 70s, 80s, 1890s, maybe early 1900s. Very impressive. Some of these are from uh, over in uh, Ruska land. You know, because a fellow's got to be careful what he says on the interwebs for dumb reasons. But anyway, just the inside of their, you know, metro or, you know, subway stations. Like just all of this. And I know other channels have pointed this out. I mean, there's no graffiti. There's no food wrappers or soda pop cans water bottles thrown around no hobos or ne'er-do-wells or addicts i mean one could say i mean they're taking a picture is sweep the floors and kick everybody out of here sure but i mean they just i don't know it's a different mentality with this sort of thing in a train station or a subway station you know and even these little modest country you know uh, rural train stations whether it's for commuter trains or what have you it's just lovely it's covered in schmutz so i'm not sure if it's stone or brick or what but you can always tell a train station though you know even if it wasn't up on this platform they just have that look you know weird that this is kind of blocked in i noticed something funny down here so if this is your train like your platform there's the train track so why are there openings here that are now blocked up and bricked up you see that is it me or Am I crazy or am I seeing that there? There. It's even got a number on it. There. Here. What the hell is that all about? All right. Um, 
It's weird. Corky in the box. Howdy, howdy. Welcome. Corky Goss is here. Nice old postcard, the Southern Pacific. Going through the canyon in Nevada. Steam passenger train. And again, you know, path of least resistance if you follow a river or, or something like that, right? But again, the inaccessibility, just how secluded you are out in the middle of nowhere. And, and, you know, Nevada's not exactly an itty-bitty state here. We're not talking about, you know, Rhode Island here. Howdy, Kim Ray. Kim Ray in the box. Maybe that's a cover that has partially fallen off. This down here? Well, come on now. Look at... Like the whole thing is built out of these and then they covered it with stone and some of that stone has fallen away, is what you're saying. It's possible. It seems like it's, you know, at regular intervals and whatnot, but maybe I'm just being suspended. And it has a, like a larger sort of header about, I don't know. But yeah, it could be just like a facading stone that does the train over years of rumbling and vibrating, going back and forth, past the station, grinding to a halt, loading and unloading passengers and luggage and cargo. You know, if these are facade stones that could have fallen off. And then, ra you know, they just pick up the debris. And, like, I have no idea. But yeah, you never know. Look at this. Pretty tall, impressive stone arches here. And again, a lot of these are, you know, they facilitate a, you know, an electric commuter passenger sort of tram or, or what have you, but then also the, you know, your regular diesel cargo trains as well. You know, some different trains are given different right of ways and all that sort of thing. So how are we doing here on time, by the way? We are sitting at, uh, coming up on an hour. Coming up on an hour so far. I think what uh, I'm going to do here is take a quick little mid-show break, give you a sneak peek at your midweek coming up, vintage footage, and uh, we're going to have a look at some, uh, some old video footage of Vancouver from 1934, and uh, with that, I've got some Canadian content music to go with that. So Canadian rock and roll. So if you like the rock and or roll there, kids, plug in your headphones. Smoke them if you got them. It's about three and a half, four minute video or so of Vancouver, British Columbia here in Canada, Nadia land. And when we come back, we'll uh, finish up the photos and then we'll look at some other old videos of... Uh, some of these old streetcar trams and trolleys going across some of these bridges. So once again, thank you very much for joining me here. Frankie and New West Reset Live, episode 61, train, trestle, and tunnel photos. Going to give you a sneak peek at your midweek vintage footage. And then I'll be back in about three and a half. Stick around. Be right back. Thank you. 
All right, and we are back. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome once again. Thank you very much for shooting in, joining a fellow here. Frankie, New West Reset, New West Reset Live, episode 61, where we're looking at train, trestle, and tunnel photos, courtesy of George Prokopenko, friend of the channel here. A better part of three quarters of the way through that folder, maybe a bit further along than that. And then we're going to look at some uh, train footage. Speaking of footage, how'd you like that old Vancouver? I know you're waiting for me to say it. Here it comes. What'd you think of that? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> anyway, welcome. Thanks again for uh, joining a fellow here. Thanks for kicking off your weekend. Always appreciate it because you know it's Friday. Cal's hey! here. Welcome from the T dot. Toronto, Ontario. -io. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. I think I saw Kim Ray shooting in. There she is. Um, yeah, Kim Ray, I have not had my meetup yet. Um, there she is. I have not. Um, shooting for the 1500 subscriber meetup. Which fell uh, pretty close to 1500 subscribers, 30 uh, ish folks away from achieving that benchmark, which is really just an excuse to do the meetup, really. <laughs> We're kind of shooting for uh, hopefully sometime in June, you know, because then by then we should be well into the 1500 subscriber. The weather will be nice, uh, it'll kind of coincide with uh, the anniversary of. My channel and whatnot. So yeah, have have not done it yet. It would be great to have you. Absolutely. Uh, the last one, the thousand subscriber meetup was was great fun. We did Stephen Avenue, Eighth uh, Avenue Southwest downtown. This time we're going to be looking at Inglewood, which is one of Calgary's oldest neighborhoods. Speaking of railway, it's kind of very railway related. A lot of the Folks that lived in Inglewood worked for the railroad, and the rail yards or the CP rail yards are right there as well, and sort of separating Inglewood from Ramsey, right by the old Fort Calgary, and all kinds of great stuff to look at there. So, shooting for June there, Kim Ray. So, yeah, if you want to go, um, would definitely, yeah, I don't need any excuses. It, the only excuse is it's just fun to meet up with uh, with folks IRL, you know, in real life and get together, grab a coffee or a wobbly pop or whatever. And, uh, you know, a bite to eat and, uh, you know, chit chat and then walk around, take some photos and some footage and just do uh, mud flood walkabouts, you know. And Inglewood's a great neighborhood to do that. Um, brick. Sandstone galore, churches, schools, old factories, old houses, uh, warehouses. Uh, it's it's great. You get a you get a nice. It's like a pizza, Inglewood. You get a little bit. Of, it's like a deluxe pizza with uh, everything on it. You know, it's like as they say in in uh, Montreal, a hot dog all dressed. Eh, give me a uh, one hot dog all dressed. Let's see. Corky saying MC5 vibe with the track there. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's uh, Gordy Johnson from Big Sugar, Canadian band. But that's one of his side projects, a band called Grady. Uh, with some buddies of his down in San Antonio, Texas. So it's Canadian content-ish. But Alberta is basically Canada's version of Texas. So, And I dig that cat, uh, Gordy Johnson. Great guitarist, great songwriter. And that's just a good track. Three-legged race, three-legged race to hell, I think is what it's called or something.
Uh, well, a guy's gotten good at avoiding capturing un, uh, uh, unsavory footage, shall we say? You know, I don't want to capture the ne'er do wells and the unfortunate souls. Um, you know, and some of them get upset, really, if they because they think you're just there filming them to, I don't know, make fun of them or something. You know, and a guy doesn't feel like getting chased by a, you know, a, yeah, you know, a junkie and what. So, yeah, yeah. Because there they are. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's the way it is. You know, they are. October. You'll be back in Cowtown, Sands, Sandstone City. Kim Ray says she used to live in Ramsey. Ah, so you know it well. I've shot a few places in the Ramsey. One where I just shot like four, I think four buildings in the same video. Just a quick little, you know, the little brick place on the corner just before you go over the bridge by the Greyhound bus, uh, bus barns. I'm sure you know where I mean there. I filmed that funny little place and a couple of other places around there. But yeah, Ramsey's great. I used to live in Inglewood and I used to hang around in Ramsey quite a bit as well. It's a great neighborhood. It's one of those uh, people are saying, oh, it's coming back. But it was never really a terrible neighborhood by any stretch. But yeah, Kim Ray, if you uh, want to join the meetup, we'd love to have you. Anybody else that's local? Just uh, keep your ocular uh, sphericals tuned into the channel here. I'll, so I'm not going to, you know, spring it on anybody last minute. It'll definitely be, uh, you know, advance notice. And I'll try to do it on um, probably a weekend, uh, early, early afternoon. That way, you know, most folks are, aren't going to be at work or whatever, you know, and... Uh, yeah, just try to make it fun and have a good time, you know. So yeah, I'll be putting up lots of notifications and I'll probably do a, a video, you know, uh, two weeks ahead of time and then a week ahead of time, a reminder video, you know. I probably will, I might even, a guy might even go on location and quickly film something that we're going to look at there just as a, Sort of a preview with a heads up. So yeah, if anybody's in the area and you're going to be, uh, or you're going to be in Calgary in, in the summer, again, right now, very vague, but June-ish is kind of what a fella's shooting for. It's kind of the target. Then yeah, would love to have you come along. Um, pretty sure Bernie was saying he wanted to join in on this one. Um, cousin Vinny. Uh, Kim Ray's obviously expressed interest. DN has also expressed some interest. So, yeah. Plus, you know, you got a feller's emails and whatnot as well. So, yeah, we can keep in contact that way. All right. So, let's see where we're at here. Uh, let's continue on. The photomographs, again, these were sent via email, speaking of email, from a uh, friend, George. And he's really good for sending uh, at least one or two emails a week with great photos. So I think this was the last one that we just looked at. Yeah, this was the multiple arched. Stonework, really nice. Thanks again, everybody, by the way, for joining me here, kicking off your weekend. If you haven't already, give a fellow one of these, give a fellow thumbs up. This I thought was really cool because at some point <laughs> there was another tunnel here that was abandoned for whatever reason. And uh, then this tunnel is put into use, I'm guessing. Now, I'm not sure for whatever reason this would have been abandoned. I 
this could have been uh, perhaps at one point this could have been an offshoot of this line, right? F further back, uh, going off. I don't know if this coal country or mining country, maybe accessing some mine up in here or something, or maybe there was a cave in, or who knows. But uh, there was a comment I noticed in the box earlier, talking about all the crushed gravel, like all the aggregate. And it's like that in itself. Because that's a great point, and I've mentioned that before too. It was Modoc that mentioned that. Yeah, there it is. Like just all of this crushed stuff, right? All of this for thousands, tens of thousands of miles across North America. And that's just here in Canada and Indian land and down in America. It's not including Central and South America and over across the pond in the UK and over in Europe and like everywhere, everywhere that has trains and still uses trains, which is everywhere, basically. Maggot's here. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, sir. So, yeah, it's just, you know. I'm not really sure why. I mean, it's, there's a lot of stopping of the train so people can pose for a photo, right? It, like, it's obviously a photo op. Like, you know, I don't know. Maybe, we hey, we just completed this bridge. And we did a test run with the train, and it worked. So now we're going to, this is our official photograph to show that, uh, the bridge is done? I, I I don't know. Maybe that's what they would say. Again, not much of a context with these, right? These are, again, just in random order that George was kind enough to send me. But it's much like we see with photos of like old buildings or whatever, right? Just, you know, a couple of clowns hanging around outside to get their photo taken in front of a building. I guess if you're a tourist, you do that today. I don't know. Like if I was to go to, I don't know, St. Louis or something, and I was stood in front of some historical old world building, maybe I would want to have my picture taken in front of it. Maybe, sure. I would definitely take some video of it. So I don't know who's to say, but it always just seems weird that, so we're going to inconvenience all of you other passengers on this scheduled train ride. So we can stop the train at, to a dead halt here on this trestle bridge, which again looks like lumber to me, by the way. So that, uh, you know, these seven bozos can take their photo, which is going to take about 20 minutes. Again, here's that, uh, what they're calling a viaduct, but it's a trestle bridge. Lethbridge, Southern Alberta. It's a mile long, 47, one mile and 47 feet long and 307 feet high. I've seen this, but I've not seen it up close. Like I haven't gotten out and looked at it, but I've seen it driving into, as I was driving into Lethbridge, you know, in my earlier days. But like just the whole support system, well, even down here, you know, they got to build all this up, I guess, just to be able to get their footings in place to even start this thing. And again, even though it's, you know, as straight as an arrow, I mean, this thing's a pain in the ass. At least they're close enough to Lethbridge. What, what an engineering feat, you know? Well, yeah, that's that's true, Vinny. Yeah, that's right, Vince. Uh, I wouldn't, as a tourist, get my photo taken in front of, yeah, if I went to New York, you know, get my take, picture taken in front of the Statue of Liberty, I wouldn't say, uh, this is mine now. Yeah. What? You got any proof it's yours? Well, yeah, there's a picture of me standing in front of it. So that means I own it, right? 
but yeah, this is just incredible to me. You know, it's uh, and this is just a huge coulee, by the way. This isn't like a raging river or anything. So, in some ways, that makes it easier, but again, in other ways, it makes it difficult because this is what in Alberta is known as the Badlands. It's, it's desert, basically. It's like what we see where John Levi lives in Utah. It's exact same kind of idea. Cold at night, hot ass during the day in the summer, rattlesnakes, scorpions, and all kinds of critters down in here. So it's, you know, water for these guys working out in the hot sun to build this thing. Oof. You know. Yeah, you know, mile long is uh, now again, you know, mile long across water would now that would be a whole different kettle of fish if you pardon the pun. And this is tough enough, right? But wow, man. Corky saying uh, Detroit had a star fort. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, there's you see on old. Maps. I just saw where did I see that recently on somebody's channel. There's look showing an old map. It may have been um I think it may have been Martin's channel. Martin Liedke. You know Marty. Martin Liedke. Flat Earth British. Oh, you know Martin. Right? We all love Martin. I think it may have been his channel. Were you showing a bunch of old maps or books or something? And yeah, Detroit, Starfort, right there is plain as day. As plain as a nose on a fella's face. Just about a train whistle, eh? Huh. Huh, nice. See what else we got here for photographs. So this is uh, over the uh, Dawn Valley. We looked at this recently, uh, courtesy of uh, courtesy of Terry. Don Valley uh, brickyards right next to these exquisite um, government uh, government house mansions. This didn't make any sense. But again, because I guess they would say because of the steep incline that it's just easier to go from one side to the other across a valley or a coulee or a river or a gorge or whatever. Well, in the map you showed it, well, there was a star fort within Detroit and there was streets, the, the grid pattern of streets and everything and other buildings outside of the star fort. But generally speaking, when one sees a, you know, a star fort, it's probably just the star citadel of a much larger star city. And uh, you could bet that, you know, Detroit being an old world city, as old as it is, was probably a walled star city, much like, let's say, for example, up here in Canada, right? Quebec City, old Quebec City is a walled city, a star city, you know, or the pedestal of, uh, you know, the... Statue of Liberty, right, is a star fort. That kind of, somebody's alternator, by the way, squealing like the dickens. You hear that? Sorry about that. That's squealing? Come on, man. You got to change your alternator belt there, buddy. Anyway. Yeah, so like, for example, the Chateau Frontenac is within one star fort, but then there's a larger wall, star wall around, way around the old city of Quebec City, right? But let's say like the pedestal of Statue of Liberty would be the, the center star fort or star citadel. 
And not all the citadels are star-shaped. Some are rectangular. Some of them are, you know, hexagons or whatever. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. That's a lot of crud just laying around down here, by the way. Becoming a dump yard or a dumping ground or something. What the hell is this cockamamie nonsense? It gets a little pickled when a guy zooms in. It's hard to tell what that is. This, I'm assuming, is iron or steel, which would lead me to believe this is more than likely the same thing, iron or steel. I think I'm seeing rivets and rivet plates here. Maybe. But then this looks like... Wooden logs, maybe like a wooden retaining log, a retaining wall, or I, I don't know. All I know is when I look at this, I'm thinking to myself, this was a huge pain in the ass to build. This is super impressive. Again, even at this point with a steam crane, train, car, right? And, you know, uh, unloading you know, sections at a time and then being assembled like Meccano or whatever, even still with how high this is. Are these dudes up here? Yeah. Like if you slipped, whoa, Charlie, boom. I mean, you're, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, stand back. We're doing a doing a test. That's where you walk across. You know, you get your, like a, a engineer to walk across, and you have another engineer just set the train going, empty, like nobody on it. You know, just push the throttle up enough where it just does a slow chug, 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 chug. And when it gets to the other side, the other guy jumps on and uh, applies the brake and says, oh, okay, I guess we're good. There's a, there's a train going across this one carrying lumber. So this is out in the middle of nowhere. Born again bridge. Okay. Not sure. Obviously a logging train way out in the mountains somewhere. And this to me again looks like a wooden trestle bridge. Imagine how, and again a curve on the damn thing. Imagine how long, man. And this isn't, you know, a mile outside of Lethbridge where your guys could literally you know, go home or, or go stay in a hotel for the night. I mean, this is, you're going to have to set up camp. I mean, this is crazy. Well, I mean, while you're building this, right? Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me, hippie. Yeah, fellas, I uh, got the PayPal going here on the channel if you want to. Make donations. I've had people send me messages, you know, because I, you know, I've, I've, I didn't want to be doing the um, monetizing the channel because the Hootubes wanted uh, wanted to strike down a bunch of my content because it wasn't, you know, advertiser friendly to be monetized, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, I don't No, I'm not taking down any of my content. So then I had people saying to me, well, you know, if we want to donate, how? Well, there you go. That's how you can donate. So thank you. Appreciate that. I'm a terrible self-promoter. So yeah, there, there it is. Thank you very much.
Team Heat is in the box. How's she going there, hey, bot? Oh, hey, guy. And this, this too, again, you know, like this one at least is straight. So sure, you'd think easy peasy, but again, this thing's made out of wood timber. And it's got to go across this massive gorge, like way from, looks like from about here. It comes down this hill. And from about here, all the way, like, come on, man. How many guys and how long? Like, how many construction workers working for the railroad? And how long would it take? And where did they camp? Did they camp out down in this gorge? Did they camp out on one side or the other of this thing? Did you have two crews working? One started this end, one started this end, and they meet in the middle? Well, and, the, you know, all the lumber. But, I mean, I guess you're looking at it. Right? You set up a lumber mill and you haul all this from the mill by train to a certain point, And then you build more and more and more. Train backs up, loads up more, brings it back. Keep building, keep building. I guess. I mean, I've seen photos of hoists on trains and later steam cranes on trains lifting, you know, girders and stuff. But this is pre-steam crane. And they're just using wooden trestles here. So, I mean, they'd have to figure out all these lengths as they're building up on top of these rocks. And oh, I don't know, man, this just boggles a guy's brain. I think this is impressive enough. Here you got big massive stone to sort of anchor this thing as it shoots across this massive gorge. And it's actually, you do have some water here that you've got to, you know, it's again, just one more challenge. It looks like it's small enough they could have dammed it up and diverted it maybe or whatever, but looks like you got another a road or a bridge, well, a bridge or something there. So while this is pretty straight, it's really high up. And you got like different topography that you gotta deal with. No thoroughfare. The public are positively forbidden to walk across this bridge. Yeah, because there's nowhere to go if a train's coming. You'd have to literally hang on and dangle. Like in uh is that Lost Boys? Was that Lost Boys? I don't know. This is a great shot. It's a little blurry because it's actually an action shot. They didn't even bother stopping this to take the photo. Somebody just took the photo. But this looks almost kind of rickety to the guy. Like, doesn't this thing look like that's a little rickety to support the? I mean, it's a good thing you only have your coal car, a caboose, and, and a passenger. Which, by the way, these should be the other way around. Your caboose normally would be at the end of your train. It's usually where switchmen and signalmen are and all that. But uh, anyway, doesn't matter. This thing looks like she's ready to topple over. Yeah, exactly, right? It looks like a, like a stiff breed. Well, I guess here you've got some, looks like maybe some more heft to it. But this... Doesn't look very fun. Now you're now you're talking. Th now this I feel confident. <laughs> Interesting that they didn't do a you know an arch on this, right? They just decided to uh, uh, do a mechano style. And again, they stop. They got to stop and take a picture, I guess. Again, if, I'm sorry, some of these photos, you know, it is what it is. If I zoom too much, it gets pretty pixelated. So I don't know if 
this is timber or metal. Looks like it could be timber, but I don't know. Maybe they couldn't really. No, they should have been able to build arches with timber too, and not just with iron or steel. Like I was going to say, maybe for it to be timber, it has to be shaped like this, or, you know, with a series of suspension towers built with the timber going across. But once they started using iron or steel, then they could use the arch. But no, if you, you know, if an engineer figured it out, they should be able to use timber and still make an arch, I would think. I think Stand By Me, they did that too, actually. Yeah, I do remember at one point they were running across. Maybe it's become a movie trope now. I think this is the, the same bridge we looked at from another angle. Yeah, because here we've got some of the wooden, you know, the timber trusses here, and then the stone or something. You know what? I'm willing to bet this is brick, and it's been smeared with schmutz to look like stone. Or concrete or something because these some of these cracks are regular but then some of them are irregular or it could be big stones and then it's covered in a in a, a thin set concrete or something maybe but uh, be that as it may you get your three mediums here and they, they just marry well together, right? When you need your strongest support above the water here, you know, they've got this iron trestle bridge with this big, whatever these are, brick, stone, concrete, doesn't matter, supporting it. But then here you've just got your wooden support system and it all just works fine. There is asking, speaking of iron, are these pegged with wood instead of bolts? I know some of them were pegged with wooden pegs, but these you could see here. We've got a square washer and then a nut here. And this has a different kind of a washer or some kind of fasten. There is some iron here and you could see some nuts and bolts here and washers. But some of them, um, like some of these wooden ones, I think may have had wooden pegs in, like in here, you know, these joints that just have a wooden dowel pegged in. I mean, this is going way back, this bridge, for example. Again, wooden trestle bridge on a curve. But, he, I mean, here we, we don't even have vehicles working on We have... Horse and buggy. Although the quality of these is looking a little suspicious. Could some of these be painted in maybe? No, no maybe not. They wouldn't bother painting in the bridle and its ears and stuff. It's probably just, it's an old photo and it's pixelated. And these people are moving. Oh, look, you got some Asian Chinese Canadians here. So there's your narrative of building the railroad. I was wondering when we were going to see some, some Chinese Canadians. So what's the old story? There's one dead Chinese Canadian for every mile of track of the transcontinental railway. This thing's 800 feet long, 200 feet high. Uh, logging bridge at Robinson Camp West, number 84. 
Robinson Camp, yeah, West, I think. But here you've even just got, they've still got bark on some of these ones. This is definitely going to have wooden pegs in them and stuff. I mean, if they left the bark on the darn timber, they didn't even really mill all of it. Some of it is milled. You know, as you get up here, it's milled, but these are some of these are still logs with bark for crying out loud. And this is the, again, this is going way back. Look at this train. It's a two, two by two, like what they call a four on four. So instead of a six on four, you've got four here, four wheels here, two on each side, and four in the front, two on each side. Instead of having you know, four or six big ones on the back and four or six little ones in the front. So this is like an, either a narrower gauge or it's an older style of steam engine. So it could just be a coal line, coal rail line or lumber camp rail line. But either way, again, it's got a curve in it. Does it have two curves here and here? That is nuts. Howdy, Kathy. Kathy Childers in the box. Good to see you. Yeah, I don't know about the horse and buggies either. They look maybe it's because they're in motion, so they're blurred a bit. Yeah, they would have used a lot of U bolts to brace. Yeah, exactly. Or just big threaded bolts that they just, you know, put down through, you know. You know, you know, through these two beams, blink, blink, and just a big nut and a big uh, washer. Oh, sorry, a big washer and a big nut on the end. But yeah, this is crazy. This is crazy. And again, you know, these guys are having to like climb down here. They're like this is rough terrain. This is this is in the in the bush here in the mountains. What the heck? How'd this get in there? Beaver, keel hauled for insubordination in full accordance with naval law by the Octago Daily Tribune. Lord L Nelson laments lack of discipline on colonial voyages. That's the headline in the Christchurch Press. What's this? Southland farmers fume at gnawed fence posts by the Invercargill Farmers Monthly. Look at this, they're keel hauling this beaver. A driftwood to nibble on would be nice. If in beavers. This comes courtesy of Jabberoo Joe. Of course, Jabberoo Joe. That's, that's a preview of the upcoming episode of the Knucklehead Show where we're going to be looking at Nelson, British Columbia. Making a, <laughs> making a slight reference to Lord Nelson, of course. I'm going to find, uh, you know, there's another photo that I uh, got to show as well, actually, from Jabberoo Joe that I missed on the last show. I don't know what happened. I think I just got ahead of myself or something. I think that's what it was. And, uh, yeah, here it is. Because he made... Uh, he hinted at this earlier in the... <laughs> he made reference to it earlier in the chat. Yeah, Francesco Fabiano de Fingerici. And, uh, you know, Frankie Fingers there giving the old shooting in and bearing an odd similarity, perhaps. But, I mean, this is an official document. You can plainly see here it's got the... Uh, it's got the official Vatican seal here. Vatican City, so... Uh, Big 
been reprinted uh, by permission by Vatican Historical Archives. So, uh, so you know it's legit. <laughs> But yeah, that's what's coming up on the channel uh, later on here in the month, the uh, Canuckle Head Show. We're going to be looking at Nelson, British Columbia. Oh, the Canuckle Head's cover. Let's see what's going on with that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll give you a preview of that as well. Sneak peek at that while we're at it just because we're having fun here. And um, I'm an admirer of Jabiru Joe's work. I gotta say, is this it? Yeah, there we go. I was gonna save it for the show, but it's always fun to do a little poking around, you know? Yeah, here we go. Oh, World Adventures with the Knuckleheads. Still cheap at 30 cents. Issue number six. City of Nelson. No, now it's Beaversville. <laughs> Ships Basone Beaver. You seem to have forgotten that I had you keelhauled for a similar stunt on New Zealand's South Island, not to mention your failed attempt to fell the main sail mast and the eight holes you gnawed in the ship's hull. And damn it, man, give me my hat back. Well, yeah. The beaver's getting keyholed for sure. Hey, look, there's a trestle bridge in the back. <laughs> Stop the beaver. And there's Lord Nelson, good Lord Nelson himself. Good old Lord Nelson himself. Yeah, I got the notification for that one, too. I just haven't had a chance. I, it, was, it was a nice day outside. A guy was outside earlier today before going live, right? I had the day off today, so. Uh, I haven't had a chance yet, but, yeah, there's. I got the notifications for a lot. I think Campbell put up something. Biggs had his live stream last night, and I had to work the late shift last night. Kind of a bummer. So I got to go back and watch that as well, too. Yeah, the you know what YouTube is filled with those videos actually of people tearing down or dynamiting beaver dams. I can remember doing that actually a couple of times down at my grandparents' old place there in uh, Quebec. You know, me and my dad and my uncles just helping my, my granddaddy. Not dynamiting it, but, you know, just hooking up, you know, hook and tackle and rope and, uh, you know, winches and whatnot and just yanking it apart, right? Got to get in there with some chainsaws and that too. Bust up the beaver dams. Of course, inevitably, they'll come back and rebuild it. But, nah, what are you going to do? You know. So, there you go. That's it for the photos. So, thanks again to George, friend of the channel, George Prokopanko, for sending not only those photos, but uh, tons of great photos that uh, I kept a few other photos in, uh, in my pocket. You know, keep them. Keep a pin in them. Keep them on the back burner for another show. So once again, thank you for joining me here, Frankie. New West Reset. The New West Reset Live, episode 61. Thank you very much for shooting in and joining a fellow here for another live one. Appreciate it. Train, trestle, and tunnel photos. And again, links in the description below for... Um, BitChute, MeWe, my email, uh, Rumble, because we're uh, well, we're broadcasting live on the Hootubes and the Rumble right now. Feller's PayPal is over there as well. Appreciate uh, appreciate that. 
But uh, to be quite honest with you, the best way to support the channel is to, you know, like, make sure you're subscribed, share the stream or share my, my uh, weekly video uploads. Kathy says uh, she's late because she was watching an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Well, there you go. You gotta do what you gotta do, you know? <laughs> uh, believe me, after I'm done uh, with this live stream, I got some shows I gotta catch up on. I've been watching that new Shogun. I think it's on FX, but I'm not sure. My my brother's a interwebs pirate. So he finds it on the high seas of the goggle machine and downloads it. So the, the episode and we watch it. And that's that's been terrific, absolutely terrific. Also, just watched the second episode of that. Uh, I believe it is an Amazon show. Again, I don't know where my brother finds it. I don't know. Uh, but it's the uh, from the video game Fallout. Just watched the second episode of that, and so far that's pretty good also. If you're not familiar with the video game, the premise of it is that in the 1950s, uh, America and the Ruskas, uh, they have a bit of a nuclear exchange or an atomic exchange, supposedly. Uh, so there was a bunch of underground vaults set up, like 30-some, 30 30-plus-some, 30 maybe 33. In fact, I think it was 33 vaults, now that I think of it. Hmm. Hmm. But anyway, in the video game, you know, various folks take refuge in these various vaults. And, you know, I think it's two on the show. Anyways, it's 200 and some years later, uh, they open the vaults and some people go out and they're exploring and everything's basically stopped in the 1950s. But it's sort of a fantastical, almost steampunk version of the 1950s. Anyways, it, so far, it seems like a very interesting show, but it touches on a lot of interesting topics that we explore here in, uh, well, not only on my channel, but other channels like mine that kind of look into, you know, how uh, our history has been occulted, for lack of a better word. You know, we've had the wool pulled out from under us and the wool pulled over our eyes at the same time, somehow. And well, as far as Shogun is concerned, oh, well, that's just a good show. That's that's just that's all I can say about that. Speaking of shows and videos and uh, little clips, I promised that I would show a couple of clips here of uh, some train footage as they're crossing some of these bridges. And again, one is the Brooklyn Bridge and the other is the San Francisco Bay Bridge. So let's see. Um, let's see which one we're going to look at first here. I uh, guess it doesn't really matter. Actually, no, let's start with the Brooklyn Bridge because that's 1899, apparently. So, you know, the picture isn't going to be super high test stuff here, keep in mind. Or, you know, it is what it is. You know, I can clean it up as best I can with my editing software and whatnot, but. Now, there's uh, no sound or anything on these, right? So uh, I'm just going to kind of let it play through. So again, this is supposed to be 1899. Now, this is obviously a very iconic bridge and uh, old world for sure. I mean, they just don't build them even looking like this. You know, it's just very unique. Love how we could see the electric tram or streetcar beside that we get into the uh what i'm guessing is the iron trestle work here within the guts of this thing yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> 1899. And what I like about this is it's, you know, from the, I, I'm guessing the, the driver, the conductor's point of view. So he really gets, I mean, you see people walking across the top there, you know, different pedestrian walkways. You see the lanterns or the lamps above, you know, on the, on the other surface, the pedestrian sidewalk surface, I guess. In the tram off to the side. The other thing I like is you get some old world buildings in the shot too. I think we actually get some footage of pulling into the station here too. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's just a very, again, very unique, beautiful looking old bridge, right? So uh, it's just very iconic. Yeah, like, I can't remember. I think there are construction photos, supposedly, or what they say are construction photos of that bridge. But I mean, I mean, I'm one to talk. I was showing photos for the whole show here, and I'm showing old video, but I mean, we can't, we still have to call into question all, all these forms of media, not just what we're reading in books or we're told in the classroom or what have you, but, uh, you know, and of course, modern media. But even, you know, we have to question what we're seeing in photographs and on these old film reels and stuff too, right? So if we're given a photograph that's labeled as construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, we got to scrutinize that just as much as anything else. It could very well be, but instead of being dated, you know, 1850 or 60, whatever, or whatever they say the date of the building of that bridge was, I mean, who knows? Maybe that bridge is uh, 200 years older than we're told. And maybe, you know, um, you know, photography from the old world is older than we're told too. You know, it's not from the 1840s. Maybe it's from the, I don't know, 1680s or 1720s. I like, these are all things that we have to question. I'm not saying I know for sure, but none of us do really. And that's why we have to question because we're getting fed a lot of BS. We're being treated like mushrooms over here. eh? We're kept in the dark and we're fed bullshit. And that's not fun. So this next one here is uh, 40, 40, 40, 40 years later, 1939, San Francisco Bay Bridge. And very similar. I think we're pulling out of the station, cross the bridge, and I think pull into the station on the other side. Anyways, it's about just over two minutes long, this one. A little bit of a better picture, obviously, because it's a much more recent uh, film clip. Yeah, so just pulled out of the station. Now, this is from a passenger's point of view, I think. I don't think it's from the 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 engine you know the engineer or the driver's point of view oh maybe it is because he's panning side to side once in a while too so maybe it's a passenger up in the front of the train well obviously i mean the engineer isn't going to be driving the train and taking the video i don't think You can see those giant girders underneath. There's a nice shot of those big steel girders in the trestle portion. Nice spire in the background there. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's right. Basically, yeah, dash cam or yeah, ancient <laughs> GoPro, old timey, old timey GoPro. It's ye old timey GoPro. Huge buildings in the background at this point, right? 1939. But still some beautiful old world, you know, three, four story brickers there as well. I guess that's the, what bridge is that? The Bay Bridge? Golden Gate Bridge? I don't know. Yeah, you can see they, didn't, they don't mess around when they build these bridges, right? No matter when they were built. Whether they were built uh, during, you know, uh, Roosevelt's New Deal, supposedly, or whether they were built, uh, you know, pre-reset, pre-catastrophe, or, you know, in the old world, if you will. Either way, very elaborate construction, really cool engineering. You know, and again, some of these old bridges we were looking at, wood truss bridges. It had lumber <laughs> in that one photo. It still had bark on the logs. They didn't even really bother milling it. Some of those, they were just like, eh, we got to get this bridge whacked up here, boys. You know. Really? Koki says there's a, a photo of a wave from 1857 that is perfectly in focus yeah so you know you would wonder why a wave being obviously in motion can be perfectly in focus when somebody's clicking the old but then you got like a horse pulling a buggy or some lady carrying her parcels across the street and you get you know what we call the ghosting you know the blurry people so yeah that's very interesting Those wooden trestle bridges, if they're in Ontario or Quebec, that, and Manitoba actually too. Uh, hell, even here in Alberta and BC going through the Rockies. Yeah, you know, um, in the foothills and up into the mountain parks areas. Beavers, yeah. <laughs> I, that's a good point. Like, I know you're kind of joking, but that's kind of a good point, too, is it, would that have been a concern, actually? Because the, we've seen where the train tracks follow the rivers. Beavers build their beaver huts and beaver dams along waterways, rivers, creeks, and whatnot. So if they're building a wooden truss bridge across a river, and said river has, you know, some beavers... Are they going to want to num 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 on the the wooden trestle bridge? Um. Wow. You might be thinking like this: this thing is is in a perfect spot. Look how convenient this is. I don't have to drag it down that hill. You know, the trees up there. I got to climb up that hill and gnaw on them. It takes you know, like a couple of days. And then I got to, the tree, even if it falls downward, I got to drag it down that hill. Some of these are already at the bottom of this here gorge. And they just chew them and they fall over and the river's right there. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking. Beavers are relentless. Yes, they are relentless. It's It's almost like they... It's almost like they do, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, creosote. Yeah, they'll dip them in uh, creosote or used oil or tar or yeah, 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 yeah. That's what railway ties are. Um, or not ties, risers are uh, soaked in usually creosote or old oil or something. Yeah. Good point. Plus, it helps, you know, preserve 
the wood, right? Like that's old timey, uh, you know, deck stain and sealant, right? Shellac. You know, stain it and shellac it nice like your coffee table. It just helps with the moisture penetrating the darn thing and so on, right? Yeah, that's a good point. It's true. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Train going by in the background. There you go. There was a beaver that attacked a guy a couple of years ago filming it. It was so bad he died. Really? Well, yeah, beavers are big. Like a beaver will weigh like, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds. Like they're not a cute like muskrat or otter sized. Like they're big. But yeah, the beaver was minding his own business. The guy was walking beside him, filming him, laughing at it. Yeah, you know, 60 pounds. That's that's the size of a dog. You know, and then they got them, you know, them incisors, right? Coming at you. Plus, we know they have thick fur and hide. I mean, they were, you know, hunted and trapped. I mean, the the backbone of Canada was built upon the, the beaver pelt trade, supposedly, they say. Plus, they whack you with that tail. Look out now. Yeah, well, they live in family groups and units, and yeah, they'll they have different calls. They're so they live in small social groups. Yeah, so they they'll defend their huts, the lodge, the the dam. But you know, you get a couple of your uncles in there with some chainsaws and four by fours and uh, chains and ropes and hooks, and then uh, you know they they tend to scurry off, right? But if you're one guy sticking your camera in their face, beavers, uh, no, they don't take to say, Buster, I don't take too kindly to that. Their camera in my face there, you see. Yeah, like he's not going to have that carved on his headstone, you know, killed by beaver. Be the laugh laughing stock of the cemetery, you know. Yeah, don't look a beaver in the eye. Bill says, when I was a kid in 4-H, we were the busy beavers. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's the expression, busy beavers, right? They're nature's, uh, nature's uh, engineers. And yeah, you tear down their dam, blow up their dam. I'll just build another one. You know, that's how they're wired, right? Because they, you know, they catch the fish. And uh, they eat the uh, vegetation. You know, they basically farm the vegetation and harvest it there. And then they catch fish and eat the fish. And they're smart. Could be. Maybe that's why river rocks are smooth. They tell you it's the motion of the waves of the current of the river or the stream. But maybe they rub smooth from the uh, itchy beavers. <laughs> so you got your buffalo rubbing stone and your beaver rubbing stone. <laughs> uh, that's ridiculous. Over Michigan says, actually, I think I have a beaver video. I'll try to upload it. Well, you just be careful videoing those, videoing those beavers now. They'll get you. That's just one more thing to add to the list of things here in, in Kanada and Adia land that if you're out in the great outdoors in the woods, right, which basically is 60% of Kanada and Adia is, you know, forest and woods and like wild, wild frontier, basically, right? Got to watch out for bears. Now I'm talking black bear, brown bear, grizzly bear, Kodiak bear, and polar bear. Got to watch out for wolves. Now I'm talking gray wolf, timber wolf, arctic wolf. Got to watch out for big wild cats. I'm talking pumas, which are also known as cougars or mountain lions, but uh, lynx, bobcat. Got to look out for wolverines and badgers. 
not to mention all of the the male hooved animals during the rutting season, and moose, elk, mule deer, white-tailed deer, red deer, bighorn sheep, mountain goat. Here in the Badlands, rattlesnakes, scorpions. All kinds of stuff trying to get you up here. Eagles, I don't know. <laughs> right? It's almost, uh, it's almost as bad as being in Australia, I might. Maybe they try to Anything weird down under there trying to kill you. Bill says, I had a dog that liked to swim out with the beavers. I want to actually swam under the water and bit him in the... Oh! Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we get some big skeeters out here. I think the record holder, though, is uh, the beautiful province of Manitoba. For uh, mosquitoes, they're like the size of dragonflies out there, <laughs> man. Uh, you know, they'll grab onto and carry away a small squirrel. <laughs> it's uh, well, not quite, but you'd swear, uh, you know, is that a dragonfly? Nah, it's just a mosquito. It's fine. It's fine. You just got to watch out for those mosquito rubbing stones. Now you know why Nelson had a problem with the beaver. Exacto mundo, my friend. Exacto mundo. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, there you go. I think I'm getting ready to wind this thing down here for the evening. Just past the two-hour mark. Just past 6 p.m. local time, mountain time. If you're hearing a weird noise in the, in the background, it's probably not the train going by this time. It's probably my stomach's rumbling. Uh, speaking of... Uh, Hooved wild animals like deer and whatnot. A fella made himself a batch of deer stew the other night. And I, and I got some left, so I'm going to have me some deer stew for dinner. Homemade deer stew that I made my own self. Onion, potato, carrot, peas, corn. And of course, venison. White-tailed deer. Delicious. No one talks about wildlife much on my beat. Really? That's, uh, I guess it depends, right? Um, some people are very, very nervous about nature and the outdoors. And you know, I'm not helping people like that by perpetuating those stereotypes that all these wild, I mean, it's not like I walk out my front door and a bear is going to get me. The most, uh, most I have to worry about in my neighborhood are pigeons and squirrels and maybe a coyote. The coyotes are pretty skittish. They see you. Uh, they lock uh, eyes on you or they even smell you. And, I mean, they're gone. They're gone. They're skittish. Maybe raccoons. You know, gophers. Eh, that's, that's about it. But yeah, you know, some people are, uh, they're intimidated. But, you know, the closest they'll get is they'll go to the, the city park or something. But, hey, you know what? That's a start, right? If your city park has a pond and lots of trees, uh, or if you're an avid golfer, I mean, you got green grass and trees, and there's going to be birds chirping. And uh, just watch out if you're in Florida. Watch out for them gator. That gator will get you there. Mm -hmm. Same old gator will go. That gator will go get you, boy. That gator. Chonk. Chonk. Gator got your granny. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, if you're in, you know, a major metropolitan area, urban Syracuse, New York, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, as much as the city planners put up these god-awful, you know, concrete and steel and glass rectangles all over the place that are not very awe-inspiring or 
precious to behold with your eyes. I mean, there is, it seems there's at least a minimum, minimal effort to have city parks or a golf course close by or something. You know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe I'm just being presumptuous because where I live, I mean, there's like three, four, four city parks within four or five blocks of my building that I live in. I mean, we have where, where my Sonalta Community Center is, which I took recent video of. Uh, it's like four blocks from me. There's a big park there. Then there's the Calgary Tennis Club, which is like three blocks from me. That place has been a city park since 1912 with the tennis club there. A couple schools with playgrounds and uh, where the old Pump House Theater is by the, by the river, just by the railroad tracks where I live. Again, uh, four blocks, five blocks. It's a big park there too. But yeah, if you live in a condo or a skyscraper right downtown in a city, it's tough, right? Yeah, if you're from uh, like Nyack or Detroit, right? Um, it's tough. I, I'm with you. I feel you. It's tough. You know, and I don't drive, so um, I boast about the, the Rocky Mountains and the mountain parks being like less than an hour drive you know, straight shooting west from where I am, but I mean, it's not easy for me to get to. It might as well be on the other side of the realm. Might as well be in China. I mean, there's buses that go out there and, you know, there's charter groups that go out there and whatnot. Sure. I mean, it's not inaccessible for me, but I guess it's no different than if I lived in, you know, right in the middle of the downtown core of a major city. You know, sometimes it's tough to get to a green space. And the stress you got to go through to get to that green space, whether you drive or take the bus or a train or take your bicycle. And to get there, you got to fight traffic and crowds of people and, uh, you know, crazy street people uh, pulling down their pants in front of you or whatever, <laughs> whatever, man. Some guy shooting heroin right there on the sidewalk in broad daylight. You got to go through all of that just to go sit under a tree and read a book for an hour. And then you got to go all through all that to get back home again. So yeah, I get it, but you got to try to do it. You got to try to do something, right? Like the internet trolls will say, oh, you new basement dwellers are going to go touch grass. Well, kind of, yeah, but I don't mean it in a, you know, ill, ill tempered sort of tone, but it, it is important. Take your shoes and socks off, put your feet in the grass or in the dirt or in the sand, you know, in the river, in the lake, in the ocean. Sit under a tree with, use the, you know, the tree trunk as your backrest and uh, read a book or just lay back and close your eyes. Listen to the birds, listen to the, the bees and the insects buzz by you as you're just, just chilling. Because they may be able to try to round us up into these cities and lock us into these big metropolitan concrete jungles. But they, they can't lock you out of where you really want to be, and that's inside your own head. You know, and if you can catch a bus for 20 minutes to get to a city park or a city zoo or something and just get lost in your own head and get lost in nature and just take some quiet time to reflect, you know, that uh, goes a long way goes a long way and i know again easier said than done and easy for me to say i'm lucky and i'm very blessed to live in a city like calgary where even though it's a major big metropolis i mean creeping up on two million people um the the area that i live in is green and fertile and parks everywhere and uh it's fairly quiet and i know a lot of people don't have a lot of those same advantages. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely very blessed. Hell, I even mentioned hey, a golf course, but I mean, it ain't cheap to go golfing. I mean, I'm not a golfer myself, but I mean, even if I was able to golf, I mean, that's, it ain't cheap green fees or having a, being a member to a golf course. That's a lot of, a lot of scratch, you know? 
But hey, if you live close to a river or a creek or something, and a, a fishing pole don't cost much, I guess. I don't know if you'd necessarily want to eat the fish you pull out of your local river <laughs> where you live, but catch and release or something, you know. It's just getting outside and getting to where there's leaves and flowers and birds, you know. And hey, if you happen to see a, a deer or a squirrel scamper by, bonus. Bonus. So with that, I think I'm ready to wind it down here. I think that is going to seal the deal here for this evening. And Frankie here at New West, New West Reset Live, episode 61, Train, Trestle, and Tunnel Photos. Once again, I want to express a big thank you to our friend George for sharing these photos and many others that we've already looked at here on the channel. So really appreciate that very much. Thank you very much, George. And a uh, big thanks once again to all of you in the, in the box. Thanks for shooting in and joining me here today. Thanks to uh, uh, Maggot and Hippie and uh, Cousin Vinny for uh, keeping an eye on things. Appreciate it as always. Thanks for sharing all the links and everything. It's really great. And, uh, it saves me from having to juggle and clickety-clack in the mouse while I'm trying to do other stuff. Thanks to all of you for... In, uh, Hey, there he is. There he is. Thank you very much, George, for sending me all those photos. The, this was a great bunch here with all of these train bridges. Fantastic, George. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. And again, links below for New West Reset, my location map that uh, Cousin Vinny uh, worked very hard at designing, and he maintains that thing. That's that's his That's his baby. Also, uh, links for, uh, again, BitChute, MeWe, my email, and, of course, Rumble. So thank you to everybody on Rumble and BitChute. Appreciate everybody is following me over there, as well as on MeWe. Got quite a few uh, folks over on the MeWe. And, again, pay PayPal as well in the links below. Coming up on the channel, of course, Sunday, Boots on the Ground video. Wednesday, well, you got your sneak peek. Vintage footage, Vancouver, 1934. We'll see you next week for another live one. And of course, many projects coming up here as we progress into the summer. 1,500 subscriber meetup, mud flood walkabout in Inglewood. Taking a road trip up to the capital city here in Alberta, up to Edmonton. Do some boots on the ground video up there. And hey, if you're up in Edmonton and you want to meet up while a feller's up there, let me know. Another trip to Heritage Park with Cousin Vinny. We're going to look at the train museum, the car museum, the blacksmith, and try and get into some of the other exhibits that we may have had to skip or quickly scoot through at a, at a fast pace to try and get everything in. And we still failed miserably, didn't we, Vinny? <laughs> anyway, that'll be coming up. Got some other road trips and surprises in the works. And, of course, Knucklehead show coming up. Looking at Nelson, British Columbia, with yours truly, and Chris from Old World Exploration. Fellow wacko, wacko, wacky Canadian there, eh? He's just another Knucklehead there, eh, buddy? So thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate it. That's going to seal the deal here for tonight. Before you go, don't forget to do this and all the other things. Until the next one, take care out there, everybody, and have yourselves a good one. All right? Thanks again, everybody. Have a great weekend. And uh, if you're watching this after the fact, after the live, watching the, the replay re-upload, appreciate all of your support as well. Thank you very, very much. You'll find the links in the description as well. So, again, thanks, everybody. Take care, and we'll have a good one. See you again soon. Cheers. It's a mystery! It's a mystery wrapped in a riddle! It's not an enigma!